Ashley Marie. Hold on, I'm just gonna make sure that I have the comments up so that I can um, respond to everybody. And uh, so yeah, so welcome, welcome. It's been a while since I've done a live stream. I hope you guys in all enjoyed your holidays. I, um, I enjoyed my holidays, as you can see, I actually uh, had an accident a week and a half ago. I was on a cruise in the Caribbean and I uh, was riding a scooter and I'm like, oh, I used to own a moped. I used to get around in one all the time. This will be easy piece of cake. And I kind of got a little cocky and overcompensated and I took a turn a little bit wide. I hit a curb and I, um, I damaged the bike and myself. So I have a concussion I dislocated my shoulder and I shattered my collarbone. So I had surgery last week to fix the collarbone. That's why I didn't go live last week. So I'm sorry about that, I missed you. And um, and yeah, so I'm still recovering. This is my first attempt to make anything since the accident and since the surgery. So wish me luck, let's see how it goes. And I'm just making sure that I can get comments here. If you are watching, uh, let me know where you are watching from. Still okay, oh, ha 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 volume. Okay. Uh, Lisa Smith from Maine. Brian, Michelle, welcome, welcome. Oh, it's good to see everybody. So, okay. Injury aside, I might be icing my shoulder every once in a while, but I'm on some painkillers, so this should go okay. Um, this is actually my first day also not using my sling. So, uh, a year ago uh, was the, uh, again, concussion. Forgive me if I ramble a little bit. So last year I had the opportunity to film uh, for the BYU TV show Random Acts. It was a really neat experience because uh, what they do is every episode they do some kind of service for someone who, who who deserves it, for someone who has done something or had something bad happen in their life or is struggling with something but has persevered and been positive through it and this is a way of giving back. That's what the show is all about and it's about little random acts of kindness that you can do for others. Uh, I love the show. It was I was a watcher before I participated in it so I was really excited when they called me up and asked if I could make a cake for this sweet girl Savannah who was deserving who had had a lot of surgeries and had been unable to walk at her graduation so they were recreating her graduation so she could walk in it it was actually the season premiere last year of season three so exactly a year ago this time and tonight is the season premiere of season four you can watch it on BYU TV or on the BYU TV app you can stream it there it's awesome uh, in the description box I have had I have a link to where you can um, watch last year's show that I was that I was in on YouTube or you can uh, just watch any of the other shows so you can catch up and enjoy the show as much as I do. Hope, uh, so, it's, so the uh, premiere is tonight at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, so we'll be done with this before that starts so you can go ahead and watch it. Anyway, as part of the cake that I made for uh, for that show, it was, uh, it was her face is graduation and I meant to bring up a picture of it and I forgot to do that, uh, but it was her face, kind of like that unicorn style of cake where it was actually really simple, didn't have a ton of details, but the one detail that I wanted to make sure that I got in there was her tortoise uh, tortoise frame tortoise shell frame glasses uh, and that's what I, I was so excited with how they turned out that that's what I wanted to recreate and show you today live how I made those and you can make those for any of your own cakes they don't have to be obviously for a cake like this but um, so you can enjoy it so first thing that we're going to do is start with uh, some fondant and make sure that you have so I have oops I have this uh, mat down right here like this, this plastic fondant mat. So I cover my work surface with it. So it's great because it protects my surface, but it also makes it so I can easily peel up any fondant that I work with. So to create the tortoise frame, we're actually going to marbleize some fondant. And what you want to do with that is take all the colors from the tortoise uh, frame and uh, then we're gonna mix them together, but you don't wanna over mix it because if you over mix it, then you'll actually end up uh, completely losing all the details from that. So I have this uh, light orange that I made. I actually made this by mixing a little yellow with a lot of ivory fondant and then a touch of red. You don't wanna go overboard. That red is really strong. If you add too much, you'll go way overboard. So just add a touch at a time until you get the color that you want. I also have some brown fondant and some black fondant. And so what we're going to do with that is roll out a little bit of this and we're going to layer them together. 
Um, sorry about your injury. Thank you, Stacy. It was a really great cruise up until that. It was a, just the adults, my parents and my siblings. So we had a ton of fun. All right. So I have some layers here now. So I'm going to take my uh, light orange and the brown and a little bit of black. And I'm actually going to layer them together a couple times like this layer them together again and then I'm going to just kind of twist it and knead it a couple times again you don't want to go overboard or you'll end up creating a whole new color and that's not what we're looking for either anyway now we're going to roll it out again and that is where you get this great marbleization um, kind of which I like better. And we're going to roll that actually fairly thin. So, uh, Jan, that must have hurt. Yes, yes, it did. Shoulder surgery takes a while to recover from, you know. This is the first time catching me live. Welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, I'm actually feeling really good. Right after the surgery, I actually felt better than I did before the surgery because um, before the surgery, my the, the bones were, were broken and like this. Um, they would rub together every time I moved. And they're like, oh, so one of the doctors that I saw said, oh, you can just leave it and in eight weeks, you'll, um, you'll be healed. The bones will merge together and you'll just always have a bump, but then, you know, you don't have to have surgery. Uh, but, um, I was like eight weeks before I can move it and I have to hold it still the whole time and it keeps rubbing together and it just drove me nuts. So, um, I saw, I got a second opinion and that doctor said that I needed to have surgery for sure. And I'm so glad they did because it ended up being a lot worse than they thought. And they ended up putting a plate the whole length of my shoulder with 10 screws. So yeah. Um, but I'm, yeah, so I'm really glad I did it. Okay. So this is, uh, rolled out nice and thin and as you can see, fairly thin. So now we just have to decide what side that we like better. And while this looks really rough, when you get the actual glasses on there, you can see you're actually not gonna see very much of it. So I do wanna pick a side that has a little bit more of this marbleizing. So this is gonna be my front, so I'm gonna put it on this side. And we're actually going to cut um, two different layers of glasses. But before we do that, oh, I'm gonna put this aside for a second. Before we do that, we're actually going to take this uh, picture that I actually got from uh, from Savannah's in, uh, Instagram. I went and I found a picture that was her looking dead on and I printed it out on some cardstock so it's a little bit thicker and a little bit stronger and this is going to be our guide for the cake. I printed it out the width of the cake. This was a six inch cake uh, and so I made it just a little bit narrower so it could stick into the cake um, and printed that off and this is what we're going to use as our guide. So one of the first things that we want to do now is to make uh, the wire frame that's going to hold all this together. So I already, right in the middle, I bent it. I measured it so it made sure it was right in the middle. I'm going to put that down where the nose of the glasses are. I'm actually going to bend it just a little bit more, I think. There we go. Because we want to stay within the line of this frame. So now I'm going to bend it, and you can use tools for this, or if you have really strong nails like me, you can just use your nails. And then we're going to come over here and bend the other side as well. And you want to try to keep it a nice smooth bend. So you don't just want to bend it in like one place. You want to make sure that it bends all the way across nice and smoothly. So check that out. I'm going to bend it a little bit more here at the ends because I want it to actually like come over here to the middle of this eyeglass area. Let's see. All right, so I'm happy with that now. Now you can take some uh, needle nose pliers. And what we're going to do next uh, is we're going to grab over here at the end and we're going to bend this up like that. Now I want to make sure that when these are flat, that this bends up, not down. So. We're gonna bend that a little bit more. There we go, that looks good. And now we're going to do the other side as well. So, needle those pliers right, ooh, right along the edge. And then bend those straight up if possible. 
And you want to make sure too that this is a pretty good corner. You don't what you don't want is for it to be super rounded like this. So I'm going to work on this just a little bit to make sure that that corners just a little bit sharper. Okay, so let's hold that up here. I'm happy with that. Make sure that both are pointing straight up because this is going to be um, this is going to hold our glasses and the weight of our glasses and this wire right here is going to be what we're going to push into the cake later to hold it into place. Um, so you want to make sure that they're both even and straight. So now we're going to go back to our fondant. Margaret, hello. Annie, hello. Debbie, welcome. Courtney, <laughs> I'm so glad that you like it. All right, so remember we're going to take this side that we like the look of best and we're going to put it down because that's going to be the front of our glasses. Now we're actually going to cut uh, two different glasses shapes because what we're going to do is cut one and have, have the wire go on top and then another one on top. So the wire is going to be sandwiched between those two layers. So I'm actually going to take this same uh, frame, make sure that it's going to fit at both places. Take the same uh, guide and I'm going to use it to cut around. So make sure you have a nice sharp knife and don't press too hard. Hard enough to go through the fondant but not so hard that you're cutting your mat. These mats are really nice but they can get pricey so you don't want to cut through them. So I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on this as I do this. Cut the edge and you'll notice that I actually cut a little bit wider than the frame itself when I was cutting these glasses out. That's because if the glasses, if the, if I cut it, the actual thinness of these glasses, it would actually be too weak and it would break. So I had to go a little thicker for that reason. I'm going to leave the center for now because that's going to give me strength as I move this around. So I'm going to bring this over here now. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So trace around and again, a little bit thicker than the actual glasses themselves. Cut, cut. Um, make sure because as you're cutting, it actually moves the fondant a little bit. So one of the things that I do is um, I make sure that when I get to the end and you can see this like pulling away as I'm cutting it, as I get over here to the final cut, I'm actually going to stop the direction that I'm coming from and come in from the other way so that it matches on both sides that I cut towards the center on both of these edges and that's not gonna, that will make sure that it doesn't warp that outside edge. Okay, Ooh. looks like I didn't cut quite all the way through right there. There we go, let's get rid of this extra. And now we're going to use some uh, clear cooking alcohol. I like to use, uh, you can use clear vanilla, you can use vodka, you can use almond extract. They all have a good amount of alcohol in it and that's going to stick the fondant together. You don't want to use water because water actually will make the fondant slimy. You don't want that. Okay, so now we're going to set that down here. And let's do an overhead shot so you can see. Um, and make sure that this is aligning with the glass shape that we had. I'm going to bend this just a little bit that way. Make sure that this is still, this is going to be centered and it gives us enough height along that top edge because we want it, we don't want it to go all the way to the edge. We want there to be a little bit beyond that. Okay. So I'm going to press this into shape or into place, making sure that these are still sticking up. I'm going to add a little bit more of that clear alcohol to the top. Now I'm using wire that is covered for this reason so that I can actually use it to be a little bit more tacky and a little bit more sticky. Okay, and then we're going to take our other shape and stick it right on top, trying to match them up as best as possible. Now you'll notice when you get to the edges, kind of depending on where you bent your wire, I try to bend my wire so that it's just a little bit um, inside uh, the the so that the wire is a little bit inside the outer frame so that I can 
kind of cut and then wrap this around. And that way when I add the side, it'll be true to where the glasses are. Okay, so press this down again, holding that in place. So there we have the beginning of our glasses. And you can see that tortoise coloring within there. So I'm gonna leave this here for just a second. And um, I'm gonna answer a couple questions because I want that to kind of set a little bit. So when I start carding, carding, carving the inside of the glasses out, uh, they're not gonna slip and slide. We wanna give those just a couple seconds to stick together. So the reason that I recommend using alcohol instead of water is when you add water to fondant, it actually just makes it slimy and a little bit drippy. Um, and eventually it will stick together and dry, but it'll take a while. Where when you use some kind of clear alcohol, like clear vanilla, almond extract, uh, vodka, then uh, that alcohol evaporates and it forms just a really tight glue and helps that stick together really, really well. I've had a lot of people complain, well, this cake is for children. We're using clear alcohol to hold this together. Isn't that bad? I actually have found that I use less of the vodka or clear vanilla than I actually use in the cake itself in the uh, using actual vanilla. So, um, so that's up to you. Uh, I have never had a problem with it. I've never had a problem serving it to, uh, to children. I've had the same bottle for like eight years now and it, you, you really don't use much. If you're using a lot, that could be a problem, uh, but I really, really highly recommend it. So, um, and that's what other cake decorators will also recommend you to use. So, uh, do you prefer lemon extract to piping gel? Piping gel has its own uh, purpose. Uh, and sticking fondant together is not one of them. It's gonna give you that same slimy effect. I would not use piping gel to stick fondant together ever. I would definitely use something with alcohol in it. Um, the funny thing is uh, a lot of people prefer to use almond extract. Just be careful because there is nuts, nut allergy. People, a lot of people don't think that the extracts are gonna affect allergies, but they really do. If someone has a nut allergy, I would recommend using this. But actually almond extract has a lot more alcohol in it than vanilla or vodka does. It's a much higher proof alcohol, so. Um, just word of warning to you. Um, you ever thought of this? Do you buy your fondant and you make your own from scratch? That's a great question, Margaret. I actually prefer buying it, uh, making it, and the making a good quality fondant. The ingredients are actually very expensive, and I found that it basically costs the same amount to buy it as it does to make it. And by buying it, I can buy the exact colors that I want. I don't have to. It saves me a lot of time in not making it, and it costs me the same amount. So. Honestly, I prefer to buy it, and the brand that I like is Satin Ice. Uh, I feel like they have a really, really great texture, so that is what I like. Susan from Louisiana, hello. Baking Diva, hello from the USA. Random Max, it's good to see you. Uh, you are so welcome. I was so glad I was able to participate. Uh, okay, I think everybody has their questions answered. I'm cut up, so let's go back to the glasses. Uh, so as you can see in the picture of the glasses, the outer rim is actually very thin, but I don't want the glasses to be that thin because if I did cut it that thin, uh, I would risk breaking it. Now, I always make backups for cakes. It's really important to do that because things do break, especially if you're transporting a cake. But, um, but you know, to try to not risk this as much as possible, I am going to cut this a little bit thicker than the actual glasses are. Plastic is stronger than fondant at the end of the day. So I'm just gonna actually eyeball this. You wanna make sure that you keep your knife clean too because the fondant will dry on it and then you will, uh, you're gonna risk, uh, as you cut it, actually dragging the dry fondant through this. So uh, you can eyeball this, you can use the, uh, the glass, the cardboard, the cardstock printout as a guide. Uh, and again, I'm going to go in one direction as long as I can with trying not to warp this shape that I'm creating. And then I'm gonna go from the other end to merge them together. And try not to get fingerprints in this and also trying not to, um, to warp this too much. So just take your time, there's no rush. So I like to do the bottom shape first and then come back and create that nice rounded top shape. Making sure that you don't come too close um, let's see, maybe the other angle. Too close to that, um, to the wire that's right here. So I can see the wire, I can see the bump of it, so I'm gonna make sure that I give it plenty of room as I come around and cut this top. And again, 
I don't just want to keep going in one shape constantly, so I'm going to come back around to this other side to get this final cut. And then you can pull that away. And this down here where there is no wire is going to be a little bit loose, but that's okay. Use your knife to clean up anywhere. Like I'm feeling like it's a little bit wonky shape right here, so I'm going to cut just a little bit more right there. It's always easier to cut more than it is to cut too thin to begin with. So I'd cut, if you're a little bit nervous about this, cut it super wide and then you can cut away and away and away and away. I wouldn't want to cut too many times simply because every time you do cut, especially where there's no wire on the bottom part of the frame, every time you go in and trim a little bit more, it does uh, warp it just a little bit and stretch it just a little bit because fondant is stretchy. All right, so now that I have this one done, let's, uh, let's cut the other one. Let's see if I can move this a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. And try not to move it too much because we do need this to dry. So I'm going to take that same shape that I cut before. I'm actually going to flip it over. And you can see that pattern that we're going to get on the other side now. Kind of use this as a guide to cut this other one just so that they match as well as possible. You can eyeball it again if you prefer. Um, but I kind of like to try to get them as close to matching as I can. And again, making sure that you're using the knife for both directions. As you get closer to, uh, to where those knife marks are meeting, you might get some more movement. So I kind of, I, I'm a little bit flexible with my hands. I move them around quite a bit as I'm uh, trying to get them to meet up to where I feel like maybe it's stretching a little bit or it needs a little bit more strength. All right, let's see how we feel about this one. See if we think they match. You can see, I'm not, well, oops, wrong one. <laughs> wrong camera. I'm not sure if you can see right here, uh, it's a little bit, it's almost like I turn the knife a little bit and it's a little thicker on the other side. So I'm gonna come in here, and just kind of clean that up a little bit. It wasn't much, it was a pretty small amount, but even that little bit can make a difference. But like I said, you don't wanna spend too much time going over this. So just take a look at all those edges see what you think and then we're going to bring some parchment paper over to put it on and we're going to leave it to dry now this is a great thing when you're making a cake and see even as i moved it it kind of warped the glasses a little bit so kind of put that back in the shape that you want and then don't touch it while you're letting it dry so i'm going to show you the other side real fast though because i have some other ones prepared so i might have left this a little bit too tan and orangey but I kind of like it. Anyway, so we're going to set that aside, let it dry, don't touch it. In the, in the meantime, I have already created some other ones that I have let dry. And you can see in this one, I, I kind of cut it where there wasn't enough marbleization. And this is another reason to create multiple ones, because you can decide which look you like the best at the end. So now we're going to create the sides. Now, as you can see, I, these have dried for, I made these this morning, so they've dried for a couple of hours and they could still break. They're still, I can, I could squish them still if I wanted to. They're still a little bit flexible, which is why I definitely recommend doing these the day before you're going to make something. But as you can see, they work. <laughs> so now we're going to add the sides. Now you can continue to use this same marbleized, um, fondant that we made from before from the tortoise shell uh, and that will work great and this is another reason why you kind of want to leave these uh, and not throw them away too soon but she actually had uh, blue sides to her glasses so that is what I'm going to do here to continue making those savannah glasses so I'm going to take some blue fondant now when you start using fondant whether you bought it fresh or whether you, this is I want to say this is probably a year old um, I'm just pulling some out. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you knead it really good before you start working with it. And if you pull it out of a package and you realize that the outside is really hard, you can actually cut that away. Cut anything away that's not going to be kneadable, that you're not gonna be able to smooth back out uh, and, and just toss it, but the inside will still be good. So uh, I like to use shortening 
when I'm working with fondant and keep shortening close by, keep it on my mat, keep it on my rolling pin, keep it on my hands, especially when you're kneading a fondant that might be a little bit hard. Now, if your fondant is too soft, you can always knead in some, a mixture of uh, powdered sugar and flour. Is that right? Concussion. Whoop, sorry. Uh, no, cornstarch, sorry. Powdered sugar cornstarch mixture. Uh, and I'll knead that into my fondant, but you don't want to knead too much of that in because that will definitely change the fondant texture and recipe, which you don't want to do. So I, this is why I try not to knead in too much uh, of the shortening, just a little bit on my hands, just to make it so it's not super sticky. And you just want to knead it until your hands have warmed it up and it becomes nice and pliable. Where before it was hard, now we can move it a lot. So. We're gonna roll this out now and work on the sides. The other thing you wanna do is make sure that you keep your surface clean. There is a lot of little brown fondant specks all over from where after cutting the glasses. And we don't wanna roll this out and have it end up with a bunch of brown flecks in it. Hello from Brazil. Hi, Jerry. Uh, Naomi, thank you. I'm glad I'm in recovery too. Thank you so much. Uh, you're brave to work with longer fingernails. You know what? These nails are new for me, so I actually haven't really worked with fondant with nails before, so we will see how much I like them or dislike them. So kind of trying, that'd be fun to have nails for my trip, and I just haven't had them removed with all the surgery and everything else going on. All right, so again, we're gonna double this up around the wire, so you wanna get it fairly thin. This right here is a little bit too thick still, but the center has gotten fairly thin. I'm happy with that. So now if we put our glasses down and we cut the whole length from here to here, then we won't have anything to stick inside the cake. So we actually want to think how far into the cake is this going to go? And if the cake is a six inch cake like this, I actually want about this much of the ends sticking out. And the reason for that, um, is because if this sticks out, we want to have, we want, we want the cake to be fairly close to the glasses. I mean, think about wearing glasses as a person, right? Uh, this is why I did LASIK. <laughs> Not a fan of glasses. Uh, so the glasses actually come very close to your face. And while this much is going to show on a human, we aren't putting this next to the cake. We're putting this into the cake. And so uh, you can take something rounded about the shape of what you're using and you could stick it down if you wanted to like this is actually about five inches and our cake's gonna be about six inches it's gonna stick out a little bit farther than this um, so again i'm only going to do about an um, inch and a half of fondant on the sides of these and that will give me plenty of wire to stick into the cake and to work with uh, now i gotta find my knife not quite sure oh there it is what did i do with it okay so I'm actually going to just cut some strips and I'm going to make them uh, just over a quarter of an inch thick. Um, there we go. Because glasses tend to be a little bit thick on the sides and then they tend to thin out. So now I'm going to cut, oh, make a nice clean edge over here and cut about an inch and a half, uh, about an inch and a half. And again, for my backup glasses, an inch and a half, about an inch and a half. Now, uh, if you're super OCD, like I tend to be, you can of course use a ruler for this. Um, so we're going to pull one out, do the same thing with that clear alcohol. Oh, wrong camera again. Uh, all right, so do the same thing with that clear alcohol. We're gonna make sure that it's nice and straight and set it, pressing that wire down into it. Mm. This is nice if you have another person that can be another hand just for this moment because, there we go. Kind of hold the, kind of hard to hold the glasses upright at the same time I'm doing this. Okay. And then peel up your fondant and we're gonna, usually what I would do is I would actually um, let the first side dry completely. And I wanna say when I made this for the cake last year, I made like three different glasses. One so I'd have the choice and two in case something broke. Um, 
So what I did is I did all the first side first, I let all of them dry, and then once they were dry enough that they weren't flipping around, then that's when I flipped it over and did the other side. But today we're just gonna move on and do the other side. So you will notice that I actually have um, a little bit of overlap because, oops, a little crunchy in there, there we go. Um, that when I put them together, I must have stretched out one of the fondants a little bit because right here I have a little bit of overlap. That's super easy to fix. I'm just going to come in here with a knife and cut that away. And then you can use your finger to soften that up. Because you definitely want to make sure that the inside isn't showing more than the outside. I'm gonna smooth that a little bit here, round it a little bit like the plastic would be a little bit smoother, and then let that dry. One of the things that you could also do is because glasses tend to go from fairly thick over here to narrow when they meet the ears. You could, if you really wanted to, cut this away a little bit, but usually that happens close to the ear, so I am not gonna worry about that in this case. I'm just gonna move on to that second side. So again, let's take one, put it over here, add a little bit of the clear alcohol to it. Um, put this down like that, make sure it's straight. Oh, this is again where that other hand comes into handy. I need to get my 18 year old in here. And then take another one. Now notice I'm using one from the same strip, just in case I cut the strips different lengths. If this, if this side was a little bit thicker and this side was a little bit thinner, I'm pulling this from the exact same, um, exact same area. And Press those together, pull it up, and see if I'm happy with it. Make sure that it comes and meets over here. There's not like a gap where you can see the wire. And then I would let that dry. All right, so that is how you make fun glasses. Now, if I was just putting these glasses on top of a cake instead of putting them into the cake, I would of course bring that side all the way down and I would have previously bent the wire right here where it would go over the ears and I'd make sure it was about the same height as the bottom of the glasses so that when they sat, the glasses would sit fairly straight. If you want the glasses to sit on top of a cake uh, and have like the glass, the ear part cross over, I would, do one of the sides first. I would actually bend the fondant. I would do the eyeglass first, just like this. Then I would take the take the needle nose pliers and I would hold it right here at the end and I would bend that first side in, put that fondant on and let that dry completely. And then I would take the second side, bend that, put that one on and then let that one dry completely. The other thing that I would do is I would leave them against the parchment paper like this or if you bent it like this while it dried completely uh, rather than put it back to this because if you put it back like this and let it dry these can actually especially if it's long fondant the weight of it can actually slide down that wire and distort the edges which you don't want so that's why you want to make each component uh, separately even though we're putting it on the same wire base so that is it and I haven't worn glasses in a long time what do you guys think should I go back to wearing glasses even though I don't need them anymore? LASIK was the best thing ever, by the way. Um, okay, that's it for this tutorial. Don't forget in the description and the links, you wanna go check out Random Acts. It was a really awesome experience to be a part of. I really enjoyed researching Savannah and researching uh, all that she had been through and then creating a personalized cake just for her. And you don't have to be in a TV show to do awesome things like give back to your community and do random acts for strangers and do kind things for others just to let them know that you're thinking about them. I don't know about you, but anytime I get a letter in the mail where someone's like, hey, you did a great job at this, I noticed you just so you know, whether it's signed or whether it's anonymous, it always just makes my day. And that's something that we can do for other people as well. So BYU TV, Season four premiere tonight, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. You can watch on BYU TV, or if you don't have BYU TV, you can use the BYU TV app for streaming. And in my description box, you can see a link to last year's video that I made, the episode that I was in, super fun. Uh, and then you can also, there's also another link that will show you all of the Random Max TV uh, shows, so you don't miss any of those. And 
Hopefully I'll be feeling a little bit better next week and I can do a full recipe for you. So in the comments down below, let me know if there's something that you would like to see live and I will go back to edited videos as well. And I'm going to take a couple seconds to answer any questions and catch up. Uh, but if you need to go, uh, thanks for watching and for being a part of this. All right. Ooh. It's hard to see with these things. I'm so used to having all of my peripheral vision clear. All right, so let's catch up. Uh, is shortening a fat you don't have Crisco? Shortening is a vegetable fat, not like where lard is like an animal fat. Um, uh, so I wouldn't use lard simply because of the smell. Uh, so I would definitely look for some kind of uh, vegetable shortening. You could uh, use butter. Again, though, anything like butter and lard, anything that's animal-based product is going to affect your fondant differently and it will have a smell to it and it also won't last very long. We're shortening, it's not gonna affect the fondant very much and I can let this fondant dry. I still have cakes on display in my kitchen that are years and years and years old and I couldn't have done that if I mixed in butter or shortening. So just, or butter or uh, lard or fat. So, so just a thought. Uh, hello from Detroit, Michigan. Fawn out of the package. Looks like cold stiff cookie dough after kneading it. Is it closer to Play-Doh? Yes, it depends on the brand. Of course, there are a lot of brand options out there now, which is nice. The other one that I like, if I can't find satin ice, I like the Fat daddy -O brand as well. That would be my second choice for fondant. Um, and it also kind of depends on what you like. Some people like working with a stiffer fondant. And uh, when they've tried satin ice, based on my recommendation, they're like, this was too soft. So uh, it's worth, most, most brands now have small containers that you could buy and try just a little bit at a time. But I will say a fondant that you're comfortable with will make a huge difference when it comes to making cakes. Like there's a brand out there that's super popular, easy to find, easy to get, but I think it's too dry. And I feel like it leaves a lot of cracks and like that elephant skin texture on the outside of my fondant and I don't like working with it but I know a lot of people who do so it's about finding the fondant that works for your own uh, time frame the temperature of your house and the lights that you might be using uh, so satin ice is definitely my favorite brand uh, thanks you are so welcome uh, uh, definitely close play-doh thank you you're so glad I'm feeling better thank you Margaret you love the glasses they turned out super cute uh, thanks for the clear alcohol advice you've always used water good luck Courtney let me know what you think uh, it's very cool looking. Thank you. Oh, I probably shouldn't move that arm. Uh, thanks for your recovery. You're brave. Uh, I never would have thought of this. Sorry, I'm trying to just make sure that I've caught up. Speedy recovery. Hope you get well. Thank you so much. I will keep you posted. Your hair is adorable. <laughs> you watched, so um, you've watched Random Max and it made you cry, right? It makes me cry too. It's really touching. You could do some kindness in your life. Oh, Tiffany, I hope that you have some really great support where you are. Some friends or some family or some neighbors, you know, not all family is blood. I have definitely made some friends over my life that I would consider a family. So good luck finding your tribe. Everybody deserves that. You just checked in. I hope you're okay. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I definitely recommend a cruise. I definitely do not recommend getting injured on a cruise. Um, let's see if I've missed any comments over here. Um, thanks for your help. You're so welcome. Do I have a tutorial for tiramisu? I actually don't drink coffee and I can't stand the smell of coffee. So I've actually never enjoyed or made tiramisu. Um, I could maybe make a hot chocolate version of tiramisu because I love chocolate. Uh, praying for your quick recovery. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It must have hurt. It did. It did hurt <laughs> a lot. Um, uh, thanks. I think we're all caught up. Um, yes, it's just sugar frosting. That's right. Fondant is just sugar frosting. You love my uh, Andy's mints. Thank you so much. That was definitely a favorite around here as well. Okay. Thank you so much for watching and joining me again. I will be back to weekly videos. I'm no longer on vacation and I'm not planning on having any more surgery. So I'll be back to live starting this week. So I'll see you next Tuesday with more live videos and back to edited content on Saturdays. So again, leave me comments letting me know what types of things you'd like to see. Thanks for joining me and I will see you next week. Bye. Have a great day. If I can figure out how to turn everything off. And I'm done. Maybe. Dead now.